Okay guys, so we've got all of the guides in our cylinder heads. Another thing I did is I masked off the heads and I painted them Ford blue. And we've got all of our parts laid out. We've got a couple more things we can do, but you can see we've got the hardened seats and all the guides in the heads and we finished all the seats. Uh, they turned out really nice. One of the next things we're going to do is just to ensure that the valves have a perfect fit in the seat location. I always do what I like to call lapping the valves in and I will show you this process on a couple of them. I'm not going to film the whole thing but I'll show you what we're talking about. This is what we call lapping compound and um, I try to lap in every set of heads that I do. It just gives a, a truer seat here and make sure that we're going to have a really good seal. You don't have to do it, but I like to do it. It's a little extra insurance. So we're just going to take, now, now lapping compound is very abrasive. You want to make sure that you clean these. We have to clean these thoroughly when we're done, but we're just going to put a dab of lapping compound in three or four different spots here on these valves. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the valve in the seat. You want to be careful you don't get any lapping compound on the valve stem. And again, once we're done here, we're going to have to clean these thoroughly. Now, I want you to listen for this sound. Sometimes we'll put a suction cup on here to lap these, but these valves are big enough that we don't really need to do that to these. We can actually just lap these in by hand and it works out really, really well. So I want you to listen for this. You can hear that abrasive sound there. So I'm just going to rotate this valve back and forth. I'm going to redistribute that every little bit, maybe 10 or 13, 10 or 12 turns here, redistribute. And you'll notice as we go through and do this, the sound is changing. It's actually getting smoother. That's because we're lapping that valve in with that compound and we're knocking off any imperfections or uh, any things that are not a perfect match. They would bed in and when, once you started the engine and everything heated up, the seats would bed in anyway. But I just like to do this ahead of time. Plus, one thing it does is it really gives me a good idea of where my seat location is. So once I get that lapped in, I notice that the noise has changed here. Then we're gonna we're gonna take that valve out carefully. And you you want to, when you do this, you want to wipe as much of that lapping compound out of there as possible. We're gonna have to wash these heads really thoroughly after this. And get all that grit out of there, but you want to wipe as much of that out as you can. And then we're also going to wipe the lapping compound off of the valve itself. And what's really cool about this is this actually shows you where your seat location is. So if we take a close look at this, you can see that our seat location is that gray area right there. And that's that seat is located perfectly. You don't want it up to the top of the seat area because the valve is going to expand so the valve when it gets hot the whole valve is going to expand this way my seat area is down toward the the bottom or the margin here and that's my seat width and i can take and i can actually measure my seat width and make sure it's in specs this one definitely is so that is going to tell you that your seat location is good and the width is fine and everything I'm going to go ahead and lap all of these in and then of course keep the valves in order as I do it. Um, and then once I get that done, we'll come back and final wash these things and it'll be time to put them together. Well, now one more thing that we need to take into consideration here is our spring installed height. According to our spec, our spring installed height for the competition cam springs that we have is one inch nine hundred thousandths. Now, I want to kind of show you what spring installed height is. You'll notice how things in the automotive world are named after, you know, what they are. <laughs> you know, um, I don't know, connecting rod, crank shaft. 
spring installed height. Spring installed height is the height that the spring sits at when the valve is seated back here. So the valve is closed. So I need to know the distance from the spring pad to the bottom of the retainer because that is going to compress the spring to the correct height. Now this can vary based on you know how much we cut the seats and and you know there's other factors in here sometimes if you do a valve job you cut the valves these valves are all new but we have a gauge here that we check this with so we need to be at one inch 900 this is a spring installed height gauge so what we're going to do here is we're just going to install the height gauge in place of our spring and this gauge reads just like a micrometer so we're going to go ahead and we'll put our keeper and retainer on here and we're just going to run this thing out basically until we get it snug here now one nice thing about competition cams retainers uh, keepers um, these are these are manly valves which are pretty high quality valves but one nice thing is is they design this stuff so that when you cut the valves and seats you really don't have any issues now if this was a lot taller than not uh, 900 we'd have to put shims down here on the spring pads but I just put this on the first one here and lo and behold it's measuring 1 inch 900 which is exactly what our spring installed needs to be uh, our height needs to be so that is good we don't need to put a shim on that or anything um, let's take a look at the next one and see what we got you know hopefully these are all pretty close the the height or the depth of the seats on the other side is all pretty even that's why when you put seats in you want to put them at the same depth because you want everything to be the same here um, so we're going to run this out and let's see lo and behold when it gets tight it's at one inch 900. so i'm going to go ahead and check all these so far those two are perfect for installing our seat and of course we're going to put our our seals on are going to go over our, our valve stems here they go down here and then we'll be able to put our springs and our retainers on and at that point these heads are basically ready to go on the engine so so that is in a nutshell engine rebuilding now again i left a lot of stuff out i cut a lot of stuff out here it took uh a good you know nine nine ten hours of solid labor i didn't do it all in one day to get these heads uh ready to assemble so again there's a lot of cleaning a lot of inspection a lot of machining that i didn't do on camera and so once i check all these then we'll actually be assembling these heads and the next step is we take them back over to the assembly shop and put them on the motor so i hope you enjoyed this um, I will at the end here throw a clip in of me assembling these heads. Um, it's really, you know, pretty straightforward. It's kind of the same thing I did with the spring compressor, only in reverse. So, and I won't insult your intelligence by making you watch me compress every spring and put every set of keeper, keepers in here. We'll put a couple of them on on camera, and then we'll uh, we'll show you the final result. And then the next video, I think we're probably going to end this video there with cylinder head rebuild. The next video coming up, which is actually by the time this video airs, <laughs> the other video will probably already be shot. So the next video is putting the heads on the motor. Um, but with editing and everything, um, like I said, by the time you see this video, the heads are probably on the motor already. So. So I, I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Appreciate your patience. And they turned out beautifully. Uh, really nice job. These are going to work out real well for us. Okay, so we've got our, our heads, our valves all lapped in. We've got our heads final washed and cleaned up. And I've got the, the valves in this one here. And it's ready to assemble. A couple of things that I think we need to, I need to cover here. Um, first of all, 
It's important to have a machine shop do these heads, mainly because when you use a non-adjustable valve train like we're using here, the, the, the tip height or the stem height is important, and that's the height from the spring pad down here to the tip of the valve when the valve is seated. Now we've already adjusted all these, but the way that you check this is we're just going to take our dial calipers and we're going to put our depth gauge on the spring pad and we're going to measure to the tip of the valve with the valve closed. We're going to make sure that that valve is closed. I'm holding the close back here and I'm going to measure that height. There's a spec for how high that valve tip needs to be. The thing is when you install seats or um, you know recut seats and recut valves, it changes the height of the valve here. You take material off the valve in some cases. Now we didn't take any off these because these valves are brand new, but we did cut the seats and so it can change that and it can make the seat a little deeper into the head and that makes the height of the valve too tall here. The problem with having the height of the valve too tall on a non-adjustable valve train, which is what this is, because this just has a rocker shaft assembly that torques down, if the valve is too tall here, it can cause your, your hydraulic lifter, the push rod, to bottom out in your hydraulic lifter, and that's no good. So we've adjusted all these heights. The height is actually two, um, two inch, 110 to 140. Two inches, 110 thousandths to 140 thousandths. And we've got all of these set right at about 130 thousandths, 2.130, all the way across. So we measured each one, some of them were a little too tall, and in that case, we have a fixture on our valve granted. We shaved the tip of the valve, so but we didn't have to take that much off. Okay, so the next thing is we've got our competition cams, retainers, and springs here. This is what they call a 10 degree keeper, and these keepers are a little bit different than the traditional stock type keepers. The stock type keepers are, are not going to fit with this retainer. So you want to make sure when you buy your kit, and we got this from Competition Cams, that the retainer and keeper combination is correct. And so these basically go on like this. And then of course our, our keepers are going to go in there. So these keeper and retainer sets have to go together and they go along with our springs that we purchased to match our cam. So this is a dual spring setup. The other thing is when you have dual springs, I mean the stock type uh, 390 valve stem seal. So this, this is the stock 390 seal here. And if you look, we've got dual springs that go with our cam here. So there's an inner spring and an outer spring. Now if we just had the outer spring, which is typical of the stock 390, then that's going to fit over that seal no problem. The issue we have here is we have a dual spring set up with this cam and I mean there is no way that that seal is going to fit under there because the seal goes on the the head here just right over that guide. The stock spring is going to go over that no problem but with our dual spring set up it's just not happening. So along with our dual spring setup we have these Teflon type seals this was all came in a kit now we've machined our guides down a little shorter for the extra clearance that we're going to have here and then we have these special seals that are going to go right over that fit right over that boss and it's kind of a snug fit there and then of course we got to get them into the valve it's a snug fit onto the valve stem and so that seal here's our inner spring is going to work no problem. It'll fit with that inner spring. It goes right inside, so this will go right over it. So these are a few things that you have to keep in mind when you buy these uh, performance roller cams and even flat tap of cam kits with the dual springs. You're going to have to make sure that you have the correct parts, keepers, retainers, seal, and so forth that, so for this. Okay, so now the next item on the list springs are the correct pressure. Now we have some specs here for this spring and the specs are at 1 inch 900 we're supposed to have 
112 pounds of pressure. So we're going to set our calipers for 1 inch 900 here. So we've got our caliper set for 1 inch 900. And then we're going to run our spring. When you have an inner spring, you have to put the retainer on and you have to measure your pressure with the retainer. But we want to measure 1 inch 900 here so that we can establish that these springs are actually compatible with this cam. So we've got our little set for 1 inch 900 and we're just going to run this spring down until we get even with our calipers here. So right there I'm sitting at about 1 inch 900 and I am reading 120 pounds. So that's 120 pounds of seat pressure. The seat load on the box or on the spec says 112 to 125 so we're at 120 so that's good. The other thing is we need to take the lift of our cam. Now this is something that a shop's going to do for you, but this is our cam card for our cam that we're going to run in, in uh, Michael's engine. Our valve lift is 529 on the intake and exhaust. So our installed height is 1 inch 900. In other words, that's where the spring is going to sit when the valve is closed here. We're going to subtract 529 from that. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 29, we'll say 30. So that is how far that the cam is going to push this spring. So what we'll do is we'll just run this down until again we get to our gauge here which is set for the height and that's going to tell us what's going to happen to this spring. That's going to tell us what's going to happen to this spring when the valve compresses it. So there's 1 inch 900 right there and you can see we got plenty of space between the coils. Basically the reason that we're doing this is because we want to check the open pressure and right now our open pressure is 305. The specs say that the open pressure should be 300 so we're really close to that right there. So we're not coil binding we don't have the coils bunching up, that's going to be our max lift there. That's what the cam is actually going to do to these springs. So we know we're not going to coil bind, we know we have the right pressure. That spring is exactly what comp cams said that it is, and it's going to do exactly what they said this year. That's very typical of competition cams. Their stuff is really high quality, and when you check the specs on it, it always works out really good.